Welcome to Game Crunch Game of the Year 2022. With Brandon. You're supposed to figure it out. With Nick. I'm just asking for a game to explain itself correctly, and it doesn't. And Mike. And it was a disappointing game for a lot of people. There are many great games, but there can only be one. There can only be one Game of the Year. Welcome to Game Crunch, Game of the Year 2022. My name is Mike Anastasia. And with us in this festive Game of the Year season is Nick. Hello. And Brandon. Hi. And we're here to talk about games. Not things. Just games. Games from right. last year. Yeah. Yeah, games from last year that we played. Best of the best or the worst of the worst. We could do first. biggest disappointment today also. <laughs> <laughs> should, be, should be on the agenda. <laughs> depending on how chatty bitches we are. That's true. Yeah, I guess that's true. Yeah. So for our new listeners to Game of the Year conversation, these are the rules as they go. Each category has a bunch of nominees. We have to whittle it down to one winner, and there can only be two runners up. So there has to be general consensus among us to finalize a category, then we move on to the next one. Also important to note, this episode should only have minor spoilers. It is game of the year, so a lot of discussions do come into play. But things like best story are not in this episode. So minor spoilers at best. First category, best new series entry. Nominees, hey. Pokemon Legends Arceus, Pokemon Violet and Scarlet, Xenoblade Chronicles 3, Splatoon 3, God of War Ragnarok, and TMNT Shredder's Revenge. Why do we put Violet and Scarlet on here? Did I do that? I don't even know. Maybe, I <laughs> but I will say it automatically loses because Arceus is better than Violet and Scarlet. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> yep. Um, so I'm just going to just read That's like that putting new Coke up against original Coke. <laughs> <laughs> Man, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, let's start off. We might as well talk about Pokemon Legends Arceus first. Yeah, Correct. I think this should win. <laughs> I mean, I do think I'm, that. I'm not even going to lie. I, I really do think this is such a departure from Pokemon as a whole, while still maintaining what makes Pokemon great, and also pushing the series forward. Too bad it took, like, 20 steps backwards when Violet and Scarlet came out, but... I know. <laughs> but but I, do I really do think Arceus is fantastic. And I think it's a nice... It's strangely, I think it's a nice bookend from Game of the Year last year. Because yeah. last year we gave it the most anticipated game of 2022. And we weren't like, sure if it was going to be good or not. We were just yeah. anticipating what was going to happen. <laughs> and I remember, like, I like you guys were like hesitant, and I was like, "Look, we know nothing about this game." Yeah. And uh, it comes out in like two weeks, mm -hmm. and I'm like, "I'm gonna thoughts and prayers my way on the back of this game," because <laughs> I'm like, "I think there's something there," and there was. It was actually like, like took everyone by surprise. I think because. Nobody expected. I mean, we knew it was going to be a departure, but we didn't know what yes. kind of departure. It was a great uh, one. True. Yeah. And is it an absolutely perfect game? No, no. There are some things that could be better. But like Brandon said, like the core framework and quality of life improvements they've made on the series mm -hmm. and evolving it into like something new. Um, I think a lot of people were disappointed they weren't in Violet and Scarlet. So yeah, I mean, I agree. I like. I love the. Ability right, to... all the people. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I love the ability to just like walk around and catch Pokemon and explore mm -hmm. the world. Um, and it felt like a real Pokemon world, like world where Pokemon actually live in. And and the game yeah. also did a really good job of presenting that of like a world that where the Pokemon actually lived in it. So yeah, and the Pokemon were Great scary game. too. Another thing mm -hmm. that I liked this game and that was interesting is it's like Pokemon will attack you. They're not all like. No, they will no. stare at you. But Doof <laughs> just just looks at you with not a thought in his eyes. <laughs> it's true. It's true. And then I fucking smack his bitch ass with a Pokeball and say, "Get in." You're Unless the you find one. that Alpha Bidoof and it, with the red eyes that like hunts you down. Yeah. yeah. And then you're in control. Those Alpha Pokemon were no joke. True. But they were fun too. People loved going around and hunting them. And you know, so many people complained about the graphics of this game when it came out. Yeah. So many people did. But then Scarlet and Violet existed. <laughs> yes. That is true. And honestly, in the grand scheme of, like, 
yeah, I mean, obviously there are improvements that could be made at this game graphically. Like the draw distance is not great, but it's definitely not the worst thing I've seen all year. <laughs> Interesting no. enough, I feel like a lot of the issues actually with Arceus is probably hardware based. And I feel like a lot of the issues with Violet and Scarlet is just pure laziness. I mean, I would say... to get two games out in the same year. I mean, it's it's quite possibly true. I mean, our, Violet and Scarlet definitely was a technical yeah. mess. Yes. There's no reason for it to have shifted in that shape. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's still not in the best of states. I don't think they've patched it since that first patch, though. I think they put out two. I, uh, did they? Not a hundred percent sure. I thought there was definitely two. no grand improvements on. Nope, not at all. Yeah. So. Yeah, but I mean, I, I mean, that's that's the that's the small and dirty on Legends RCS. Uh, Xenoblade Chronicles Three. Yeah. Also an excellent new series entry. I think it it's we it's weird because it's like I know we'll talk about it in best story, but it's weird because it's like a sequel to one and two, but one and two are not sequels to each other. I really want to play this game so badly. I wish I could have got to play this, but Switch hasn't been something I've been playing that much of. Yeah, but please do sell us on this. Because uh, I'm already yeah, interested yeah. by it making both of them sequels, or making itself a sequel to both of them. That's like seems really interesting to me. Yeah, it is. And we'll, I mean, I, I, we'll talk about that in Best Story when we get there. So I actually kind of like explain like more of it. But the um, the gameplay wise, though, it you know it brings back that kind of like single player MMORPG. It still has like the extremely expansive world to like go and explore. Like that kind of gameplay you expect from Xenoblade is still there. Um I think it probably has the best story of the three, I think overall. I think it works really well. It has a great cast of characters that really bounce off of each other. Uh the gameplay is a lot of fun because it has you are bouncing around with all six characters in a party this time instead of the usual I think it was three in the previous games. You have six now. Um, so it has like the core mechanics are still the same, but it allows you to do some like different combo mechanics that end up being quite a bit of fun. So you have that. The music's phenomenal. It always is. They do an excellent job with Xenoblade. It's just it's just it's a, it's it's a really great RPG package. I feel like it's just kind of criminally underlooked, partly because of when it came out. And partly because of the system it's on, but they do a good job. If you like those classic, another G5. reason why, if if I could say oh, that yeah. it's overlooked, is this is the third entry in a massive series, and yeah. a lot of people haven't gone through both the first two entries to be able to get to here. So, like hearing something that's is really good <clears throat> for a series, and it's like the third one, and you know the other ones are like hundreds of hours. It's like that's a huge task to like uh, you know undertake in order to get to the really good game that just released. You yeah, didn't quite tag them at a hundreds of hours each. I mean, I'd say, I'd say no. I mean, I mean combined. I mean combined. I mean combined. Okay, but even then, I think you. I guess I think you could still scrape by with un, under two hundred hours, which is still a lot. Don't get me wrong; that is a lot of hours. Um, and I will say though, I mean, it is. You're right because the three is daunting because that implies that you have to play both of the other two. I think this game is not so relying on the previous two stories that you have to have played the other two. But if you want the full story, you have to have played the other two. If that makes sense, like you can play Xenoblade Chronicles. I can finish two or one all the way through. I mean, I have finished one, but mm-hmm. not two. If if I were to go into this, it'd be totally fine. Yeah, I would too. Okay. Neat. All right. Um, That's like good said, to know. It's it's one of those things. You know how games are. Like the, I feel like the the sequels that are like well built, where it's like you don't have to play them. It's like if you play it, you, there's gonna be like some like, you know, nods and claps for certain things for people who played it before. Be like, oh yeah, this is pretty cool. This is in there. But for people who have not like that, maybe it will be something that would entice you to go and play the other games. But you're not really gonna be missed. Like the story is self contained enough that you don't need to have played the other games. But there's cool stuff if you have. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. And especially too, like I said, you know, it's like like, you know, this game being like a, a pseudo sequel to the other two. Like, yeah, like that you might be like, oh well, I can't play it because it's a sequel to the other two. However, it's like it's still set, I don't know, probably hundreds of years after the other ones. So it's not like you're 
it's not like oh hey just here's the same characters from the exact same last game that just ended their adventure and now everything's starting over again no Mm -hmm. but some of the events that took place in the last game are kind of what um precipitated like this game happening so you could be like oh i can see how we got here that makes sense yeah and like i'll explain it more when we get to best story um and you can be like oh okay i can see why but yeah great game great music excellent music and uh, yeah is that um and i know we could all talk about the next one on here splatoon 3 yeah because then we all put some good time into it yeah i actually think this is another one of the best like top three easy yeah, oh, yeah. I, I just i went through and i did the splat fest again this weekend yeah how was that i missed it uh i was team sour and i got wrecked so, i need a yeah. broken sd card so i can install it on my switch <laughs> i'm sad because uh this so the splat fest this time it was well i remembered it was sweet and sour was two of the three when we were talking about it last time was savory the third one like i said it was not savory that was oh spicy spicy spicy, yeah. spicy. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, the team suite had fifty some percent of the participants, which made for a really interesting. Thing. That's a shame, but yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. the Japanese love Splatoon, and they also love sweet shops. So um, <laughs> maybe that's where it came from. I don't know. Yeah, Bro. but I mean, this game, this game has like some. You know, they have a lot of great new things over. I think Splatoon two, even. Um, you know, you have. You have the classic turf war that's in there, but the anarchy mode stuff all works really well. I know Nick spent a lot of time in there. I spent yeah. not as much, but it was not having not having to wait to play. Um, fuck, well, I can't remember it. Um, Big Run? the co-op. Yeah, not Big having yes. to... Salmon Run. Salmon Run. Not having to wait to play Salmon Run is what elevates this beyond Splatoon Two for me in every way, shape, and form. Yeah, Salmon Run's excellent. I still love it. I think it's one of my favorite parts of this game. Um, and then, you know, obviously they have new things like the, the, uh, big run. And then they have like the tricolor battles, which they, I, so they made tweaks to it in the last flat fast, like they said they would, but somehow they made it weird, uh, versus how it was before. So, cause before it would be, if you were on the winning team at halftime, you would be stuck on defender pretty much like solely for tricolor battles. Now it was just kind of like a free for all. and. Uh-huh. My team had 15% of the participants, and I played Tricolor Battle probably like 20 times, and I was the defender all but two times. It made no sense. Because they made it so the other teams could defend now, too. Yeah. Okay. So it's like, I just ended up defending all the time, which I was like, I was so excited to finally be on the attacking team, and Mm -hmm. I was not, only like twice. So Interesting. Yeah, it's weird. I mean, it is nice. It seemed like, at least from my perspective, I didn't have the issue that they had the last couple times were like they would be few and far between to get into the tricolor battles. Mm-hmm. I could get into them as easily as a turf war battle. Okay. But like I said, it seems like whatever they did matchmaking wise kind of broke. It. So uh. I don't know. I'm sure they'll have to tweak it again. They're heading in the right direction now. They'll get there. But, uh, and, and, and Sweet didn't win the tricolor battles. So at least the points to that went to Spicy. So, I mean, Something's working there. It just it was weird. Okay. Split two three is still great. It's fucking excellent. So yeah. I have like two hundred hours in that game, at least. That's not I think I know I have over a hundred. It might be close to two hundred. I don't know where I'm at though. Exactly. I legitimately have no idea. But also I didn't get to play as much, sadly. You should. You still haven't done Splat Pass. You're right. I haven't. I'll have to fix that. I'll have to fix that. Yeah. I thought you guys had more to say on Splatoon. You can talk about the other two. I don't have anything for God of War. Oh, uh, God of War is excellent. God of War is more... So here's the thing. Uh, The only problem with God of War is also its strength. Mm -hmm. So the biggest strength about God of War is that it's just more God of War 2018. Uh, With, like, better moves, new stuff, this, that, and the other. All that good jazz, you know what I'm saying? But that's also its weakness, because it's like, it's not really doing anything to stand out. It's just more God of War 2018. And that's that in lies the problem, as well as like, oh, well, that's awesome. But also, oh, well, could you have not like tried to do something different? And I, I think when it comes down to it, it's like this game is expertly done, crafted. It's a great way to actually 
in the series somewhat. <clears throat> I'll leave it at that. I'm not going to really spoil anything. But it's a great way to kind of like in this reboot. And um, it's done so well that it's like, it's nearly perfect, essentially. So you can't really complain that something is nearly perfect or is just like excellent. But I have to play Devil's Advocate and be like, the problem is it's really nothing different other than looking somewhat better. And that kind of, at the end of the day, is like, is that enough to make it worth going out and purchasing this? I mean, I guess if you want to continue the rest of the story, which, I mean, the story is excellent, then, yeah, definitely. It's definitely enough for someone to go out and purchase it and play through this and for it to be one of the, like, best new series entries. But unlike Splatoon 3, where, you know, it does something, like I, we talked about with the Salmon Run no longer being a timed event, or unlike, uh, you know, Xenoblade Chronicles, you know, where it's continuing the story of two different games and tying it all together. And unlike Legends of Arceus, where the game is just a completely different thing while still maintaining the same general feel of Pokemon, this is just God of War 2018 2. It looks prettier. And it's, like, refined to a T where it's just so incredibly good. But there's nothing else to it. That's just it. And that in lies the problem at the end of the day. But I do think that because of just how expertly crafted this game is, that it deserved to be on Best New ser Series Entry. Don't really know if it deserves it more than any of these others, but it is an excellent fucking game. Okay, so, so there you go. <laughs> there you go. And TMNT. I know you both. Uh, did, did, I know oh my god. Oh my god. Nick, help me out here. Brandon. What? No, what? TMNT, said, help, me help me out here. Yeah. Shredder's yeah. Revenge? Oh, it For, fucking uh, it it's, rips it's, ass. It slaps. It's the best. It's so good. Yeah. It's so fucking I, good. So I was playing this with five other people this weekend. And mm -hmm. it's a very short game. But yeah. in the time Even that you do in, spend like, three with hours. Yeah. But in the time that you do spend with it, it's it's all killer. It slaps. The music slaps. Yep. It very solid gameplay wise. Um, I I absolutely love it. And like I said, it's like it's fun playing single player. But when you get a group of people together to play, mm -hmm. it's fun. And then when you eventually get six people to play, it's just I a complete been able to fucking. Do that, but that sounds amazing. It's madness, but it's great. <laughs> it's like it's good madness. It's very good. So I would highly suggest doing that. Um. I like I, I wasn't sure how this game was going to be when it was first announced because like I feel like a lot of these older kind of callback games can either be really really good or just an absolute disappointment, and this this game fires on all cylinders. It's it's wonderful, absolutely so, wonderful. So recently on um, Steam, a game released that reminds me a lot of Shredder's Revenge. Okay, because you're leveling up your characters as you're playing as them and everything and whatnot. Uh, and you know what else did that? Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. Oh, yeah. It makes me... It, it feels like I'm playing that, but as TMNT. Oh, 100. Yeah, and 100%. It's, it's so fucking good. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's my thoughts on the game, essentially. It's really, really good. Yeah, and I mean, too, is like, it's what's good about it, in my opinion, is I feel mm -hmm. like a lot of the games, at least on this list right now, like... It's like heavy story stuff. Like God of War is heavy yeah. story stuff. Xenoblade, obviously, heavy story stuff. Even I mean, mm -hmm. Legends Arceus and for for better for worse, Violet and Scarlet all have like some of a story that you need to follow, kind of intently. Where yeah. Shredder's Revenge is just like, nah, man, you're a fucking turtle and you eat pizza and now go kick some ass. And I'm like, okay, yeah, cool. that's true. That. Well, I mean, that's very true. Are the closest to that too. And it's like you're a squid now, you're a kid now. Well, that too. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And the story mode is there. Most people don't play it. It's kind of they bury the lead with Splatoon a bit. <laughs> yeah, I I think you're right there. Yeah, but yeah, TMNT definitely. If you haven't given it a shot this year, it should definitely or last year it definitely should be on your list of things to try this coming year. Uh, my buddy actually just got his um, uh, limited run version of it in the mail, and it Ooh. was it's like. It's so fucking cool looking. You got like the I forget it's like the pizza version or whatever the fuck it is. Oh, and it's so yeah. That's so cool. Yeah, it's fucking is great. You can't get that version. That's sold out. 
However, you can get just a digital version or a regular version. All mm-hmm. very good, very good ways to do so. I think it's still on um, Game Pass as well. So if you it got is. Game Pass, yeah, if you got Game Pass, have at it. Yeah, absolutely. That's how I played it. Me and my friend played it, and we were kind of like, damn, I feel like I should have paid money for this because oh, yeah. it's so fucking I mean, good. I did. I did. I did. I paid Yeah, I, I actually still am uh, probably going to do that in the future. Because oh, yeah. it's a great game for uh, Steam Deck. It is. Yeah, very much so. So I'll get it one of these days. I played it when we were in, what, Boston, I think? With DJ? Boston. One of the bars. Yeah. Austin. Austin. <laughs> um, Austin. It was fun. I liked it. It reminded me a lot, a lot of the classic Turtles games. Yes, it feels very much like classic Turtles while still being its own thing. And I think that's what makes it so good. Oh, yeah, for yeah. sure. Oh. All right. So that's all the nominees. There are yep. the rules. There can only be one. And two runners. There can up. only be one. Mm-mm-mm. Uh, there can only be one, but isn't there a top three? Or are we just going with uh? That's why I said. Well, yeah, top three, but only one. Okay, okay, all right, you know, all right. Only one can take. The all right, I'm there. I'm just gonna throw my hat out there. I think. Oh God, we haven't had we haven't had a good TMNT game in a very long time. I feel like it should be Splatoon three. Oh, fuck, the God of War is so good. Ah! I thought you were just like it's okay. No, what the fuck? Did you not listen to anything I said? No. That's basically, that was basically my takeaway. So you just you just put your headset down and didn't listen to a damn thing I said for like I made a minutes. I made a coffee, yeah. No, I, I, I heard it yeah, all. I feel like that's what you do every time I talk. No, I heard it all. <laughs> you said it was good. It was just more of 2018, which yeah, was I will say, say, to argue, even though I, I've never played it, to argue in that favor that that's a good thing, like, uh-huh. could you imagine if, like, they had put something in God of War Ragnarok that would drastically change its gameplay style from 2018 and everybody would be like, oh, this is trash. Like, imagine, I mean, this probably would be cool if, like, Kratos had a skateboard for half the game. Like, you'd be like, what the fuck? What's Dude, happening? I would be... I would go all in on that game. That would be my game of the year, dude. <laughs> but but like what I'm saying is is like maybe not to say that God of War 2018 is perfection in terms of video games, but maybe God of War 2018 they they got it as close as they wanted to their version of perfection and that all they really had to do was maybe tighten up some things here and there and clean up some That's things. That's exactly and, what they did. And then just kind of continue telling that story, which I think kind of speaks more to God of War 2018, and it does Ragnarok, but... And that's entirely possible, and I do agree with you there. Yeah. <clears throat> reminds me, I mean, with what you're talking about, it reminds me of, like, a lot of what they did with the, the Tomb Raider reboot. You Correct. Know, oh, no, Tomb this Raider is, like, reboot. way better than the Tomb Raider reboot. Well, no, I mean, the Tomb Raider reboot was great. The first one was fantastic, and the mm-hmm. second one was just kind of like, you know, here's the same thing with the story that doesn't make any fucking sense. Yeah, which can be fine. Yeah. Like, I don't think anyone ragged on the new Tomb Raider, like the sequel, I don't even remember what the fuck it was called anymore. Uh, oh, they well, they did, was, because it was bad. Because it was Rise of the Tomb Raider, uh, t- t- Tomb Raider Uncharted 2, and then... And then yeah. Shadow of the... Shadow Please of forget the this game. Colossus. <laughs> I mean, the so, second Tomb Raider literally was Uncharted 2. Like It, it was. was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it was good. Yeah. No, it was good. Yeah. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the first one, too. I thought they were great. But my my complaint with the second Tomb Raider was not that it stayed too close to the first one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sometimes games don't need to change. Sometimes yeah. you just you're you're good as is. Yeah. Um, looking at the what we have here, honestly, I feel like a top three that would make sense for me would probably be um, Splatoon, God of War, and TMNT. That's kind um, of. Where- where I was sitting too. Only because, like, I love Arceus, I really do. But like, but, I did not but... clock the hours um... that I clocked in Splatoon three, and Splatoon three to me felt like a wholly better experience in Splatoon two. No, hold, 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 hold on. I didn't get to listen to all of your things because I went to go make a coffee, even though I don't drink coffee because I just gave so little oh. a fuck. Obviously, that's a joke. But no, uh, there's no way Arceus is not getting on this list. There's no fucking way Arceus is not getting on this list. In fact, I would argue that Arceus is number one. I, oh. It changed the most things. It did the most well 
And aside from its technical limitations, which it had very little compared to its contemporary game that was released later on in the year, uh, it's just a better game than what was presented to us later that was supposed to be the better game. And when you take all of that away and you just look at it as a game on its own as well, it stands up as a really good fucking game. Um, That's my mine would have been Arceus, God of War, and Splatoon 3, actually. Because I think, as much as I fucking love Shredder's Revenge... I think Splatoon 3 stepping away from its like clock timers and whatnot and allowing you to play game modes whenever made it a better uh, entry. Mm-hmm. Even though the six-player co-op is... It, I haven't got to play the six-player co-op, so I guess that could be my issue there. I think the most I've played is three. So I, I, it probably is like the... You remember the old X-Men arcade game? Yeah, yeah, of course. It's like it's like that, isn't it? Because that sounds amazing. If so, <laughs> oh yeah, no. It honestly, I don't want to say a one to one feel, but like you, you know, you're in the same, you're in the same uh, ballpark for sure. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, at the end of the day, it, Arceus is still my top pick, but it's really tough between Splatoon and and uh, TMNT. Okay. Uh, you know what? Fuck it. Arceus, Splatoon, TMNT, no God of War. Get out of here. That's it. That's it. What do you, that's what do you think? Choice. What do you think, Mike? Oh yeah, no, that's good. I was gonna say, like, I'd be happy with just Arceus and Splatoon three making the list. Oh no, they're making the list easily. Yeah. All right. I, th- I think now. I guess we have to see where we stand for number one. I guess. Uh huh. I mean, I I would back you on Arceus. Yeah, I mean, I'll I'll agree with that. Yeah, I think Arceus is pretty much the easiest one to be like, yeah, it's that one. <laughs> yeah. So, best new series entry goes to Pokemon Legends Arceus, runners up Splatoon 3, and TMNT Shredder's Revenge. Easy. Right. Yeah, there you go. One category down, and then a couple more to go. Just a couple. Yeah. Uh, next best category e- Esports Team of the Year. Esports <laughs> Team of the Year. <laughs> best V Blogger, whatever. Who's your favorite? 18 plus VTuber who sells sex content. Uh, only let's fans. see. <laughs> no, let me, let me think, think let about me think. it. <laughs> uh, best artistic approach. Uh, we got smaller category. Bayonetta 3, Xenoblade Chronicles 3, Scorn, TMNT, Shredder's Revenge. I see. Yeah. I've not seen Scorn. I don't know what it is. I'm going to Google it right now. Yeah, just look at Scorn. That's it. You don't even have to play it because uh, yeah. the game's shit, but just look at Scorn. Just look at it. What's in the box? Would you just look at it? I feel like Scorn is like one of those things where it's like, we made this to look really pretty, and then we forgot how to make a game. <laughs> I don't know if pretty is the word I'd use for Scorn, but I see what you're saying. Okay, it's... Okay, you know what? That's fair. Okay, I wouldn't say really pretty. I would say very... Organic living. Interesting. Interesting. The walls are breathing. Yeah. See, I thought those screenshots were all like art shots, but that's actually nope, that's the talking. actual game. That's, yep. <laughs> that is the game. And that's what makes Scorn look so fucking cool and like for its artistic approach, because it is basically a HR Giger um painting come to life as a video game. It's too bad the video game sucks. But it looks really cool, and this is about artistic approach. So yeah, it's completely that's different. It's on the list. It doesn't have to be good. Yeah. yeah. Honestly, it makes me like if the dark suit from Metroid Prime Two is a game. <laughs> well, isn't that based off HR Giger also? I don't know. I have no clue. It's a weird fucking suit. I don't know. It would fit in perfectly in that game. Yeah. Um. What do you think? I mean, honestly, I I like the TMNT Shredder's Revenge. I like the I did too. Yep. Turtles look to it. You said that like a grandfather, like somebody's grand. I like the TMNT Shredder's Revenge. <laughs> the TMNT Turtles. I like the turtles. I like the t- yeah. Now you're just somebody's Italian grandfather. <laughs> uh, I mean, there's that band of the three. I think is just it's all over the place with stuff that's going on. I think it looks nice. This is a tricky category to relay to the people listening. Like, look at the screenshots along with us. That's the best thing I can recommend. Um, some of them, like we could describe, like Scorn is just kind of like that gritty 
kind of dark aliens organic looking yeah thing. literally hr geiger yeah L- yeah. literally hr geiger the same person yeah. that made aliens yeah tmnt shredder's revenge like if you've seen the classic turtles games like from it's Super like Nintendo. it's like and that was game. made in 4k and there you go yeah and with six player co-op <laughs> yeah. yeah exactly it's fantastic xenoblade chronicles 3 if you played xenoblade chronicles 1 xenoblade chronicles 3 looks similar uh I think the big thing with the Xenoblade Chronicles games that I always like is they take those kind of because you remember Xenoblade Chronicles like the first one you're playing on those like giant robots kind of thing. Yeah, so they got, they use yeah. the scale of the world to its advantage. Yes, so like you'll be walking around like a giant sword, and you can tell what you're walking around, and um, or sometimes it'll be like you know a giant part of an animal. Like it's it's really cool looking yeah. visuals in the like the environment i would say bayonetta 3 it's just it's all over the fucking place this i mean if you've heard me talk about this game for the last couple of months it's chaotic and the art style is kind of chaotic but it's a good chaotic like it looks <laughs> nice it's a nice looking game when it wants to because <laughs> sometimes yeah. it just doesn't want to it's weird but it's nice <clears throat> i don't know i would honestly i'd probably just dump bayonetta 3 and say let's go with the other yep. three i i think i agree with that Part of me wants to give Turtles the win. Part of me is A-OK with that. <laughs> and then I would also, I would be OK with Scorn winning. That's where I am. Yeah, I I think Scorn needs to win something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where you are on your thoughts, Nick. Um, I definitely would say if, the, if those were the three that we're picking for this category, those would be the three. Just mm-hmm. looking at screenshots of Xenoblade 3 and Bayonetta 3. You mean um, to throw in those three? Huh? Does that do you have a dark horse to throw into this? I game? no, I don't. Oh, okay. I would say Sonic Frontiers, but no. Um, <laughs> see, I feel biased, right? Because like Scorn does look very like it. The, the direction that they went for that game for their art style was was perfection, right? Like yeah. it looks very good, and it's very like gross, but like in a good way. Like mm-hmm. it, it definitely gives you kind of like the ick, but like in a way, it's supposed to give that to you. You're supposed to kind of be like everything here is disgusting i don't like it but like that's kind of it nails the feel of that game but then like tmnt the way that game looks is like if you're pitching me a game and i'm a i'm a i'm a publisher right now if you're pitching me a game and it looks like that i'm already 50 percent there like so i i will say though for tmnt like i don't want to say that art style is getting old Mm -hmm. but i will say like it's it's kind of gotten to the point now. It's not like a novelty to see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. So I think while TMNT artistically looks very nice, it's kind of not a fresh and new kind of artistic approach anymore. I feel, mm-hmm. and I feel that the way like Scorn kind of presents itself artistically is kind of the best of those three. Mm. Okay, I can get by on that. Yeah, I, I agree as well. All right. Best artistic approach goes to Scorn. We're at the runners up Xenoblade Chronicles 3 and TMNT Shredder's Revenge. All right. Best surprise. Yeah. Best yeah. surprise. It's supposed to be a good surprise. Yeah. So, you know, in case anyone listening wondered, we're not, the, the, the biggest disappointment is like the opposite end of the Oh, yeah. It's coming. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> it is coming. So, best surprise. We have Pokemon Legends Arceus, Got the Knights. Grand Turismo 7, and Nobody Saves the World. Those are nominees. Uh, Pokemon yep. Legends Arceus, we just talked about. So, you know, I oh, yeah. we, um, as we mentioned before, like it was our kind of wild card choice for best upcoming game 2023 or 2022 uh-huh. uh, last year. And it totally did surprise. It did. Uh, the other ones, I know Brandon has nice. I wrote all of them. <laughs> I will say because nothing really surprised me this year. I guess, mm-hmm. like, I, I don't know. I mean, at least for the four that's on here, I didn't mm-hmm. play three of them, and the one that I did play, like, I don't know. I feel like, and this is gonna sound like very uh, hipstery. I mean, I definitely was not the people who were being like, "This game looks like shit." Like from the day that game got announced, I was like, "All right, I can get behind this." So, like, I don't know if I would have been surprised by it. I mean, I don't think this was a very surprising year. I feel like sometimes yeah. our like best surprise is like a very like large category. 
Mm -hmm. And this yeah. year, I don't think it is. Uh, yeah, so I can explain why I put the ones I did here. Um, mm -hmm. So Gotham Knights, as well as Gran Turismo 7, were two of the games that were like raked over the coals, absolutely destroyed, absolutely called just unredeemable pieces of shit this year. And I decided, and, and I, 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 I uh, leaned heavily into that as well before playing either of them, just from looking at everything. And I decided, I made the conscious decision towards the end of the year to sit down and play both of them. Gotham Knights is a ton of fun. Um, it's not Arkham, but it doesn't need to be. It's similar to something like The Division, but as a superhero game, it's what I wanted from the Marvel game that was released that was so fucking bad. It's just a turn your brain off, beat 'em up, 3D action brawler game with level ups and gear loot systems and unlockable costumes and everything. But it's not locked behind a games as a service paywall, and that's one of the things that I greatly appreciated about this game. Uh, the point that it wasn't being like modern games; it wasn't being shit by just absolutely dicking over the player base with like oh timed exclusive events or oh well, you can only get this if you you do this thing and you give us this much money or whatever and and none of that was here and i actually really appreciated that and i know that's a very very low bar but when you look at other games that released in 2022 2021 and probably even in 2023 as we head into it that's going to be a high bar in the future to not have a games as a service covered bullshit game exist. And it really sucks to say that. And uh, that's just kind of how I felt about it. Uh, the second thing here I put in, which was Gran Turismo 7. And this game got absolutely destroyed, was one of the lowest rated games on all of Metacritic for the entire year because of their business practices, which absolutely sucked. I will not defend that in any way, shape, or form. What they did was really shitty. Um, but this game as a whole is very, very good. It is a very good racing game. I feel like it's hard to fuck that up, but from literally everything I had heard from every single person in existence, they found a way to fuck that up. And when I sat down and actually played Gran Turismo 7, I was like, no, this is actually incredibly good. It's lots of fun. Yeah, I have to grind to get the money but I don't care because I'm just racing cars. So I don't give a fuck if I have to grind to get the money because it's just a racing game. So what do I care? I'm just doing the thing that the game is built to do, which is race. So I went into it that way. And it wasn't really that bad of a grind at the end of the day when I did that. Now, granted, some of the things could have changed um, from the time that everything was being absolutely destroyed on Metacritic to when I played it. But I did not feel like the grind was that bad. I really appreciated a lot of the history elements of different car manufacturers that were taught to you in as part of the story mode. And that was done with like actual like footage from them in the past, which I thought was really neat and very cool. Um, I liked the way the cars felt. I liked the way the game looked in general. Uh, it had a very extensive photo mode which actually felt like it meant something because of just how much stuff you could do with it which was really cool because i really like taking photos in general um i like putting photos together and i haven't really fallen into the like oh i like taking photos in a game kind of deal because i feel like most photo modes in games are kind of shit but i think the photo mode in gran turismo 7 was fucking incredible and you can make some absolutely insane like artistic works using their photo editor and mode that they had. And I just thought all of that coming together made it a really fun game to play. It was really good. So there you go. And Nobody Saves the World was a little game that we picked out, me and my friend, and we decided to play um, on Game Pass mm -hmm. as like a, a weekly game. We thought we'd finish this fly through in like six hours. This game took us like 40 hours to beat. Oh, but shit. we 100%ed it, and the actual game was so good that I really need more people to play this game. So this game has some elements where it's like 
certain puzzles and things in this. It's a top-down isometric game. It feels similar to like a Legend of Zelda, like old-school Legend of Zelda kind of game, but with a lot of like really silly humor to it. Um and like puns and this that and the other and it's just it's very well put together the humor is great the characters are fun and everything that you do in it kind of feels like you're pushing towards your goal and as you find certain elements in the world and defeat certain enemies you're able to gain their powers similar to something like banjo kazooie where you can change into characters and each character that you change into has its own skill tree and its own elements that you can then mix and match with the other characters that you level up, which then gives you all these other special powers that you can combine together. So you might have, like, a water power, but you can also, like, fucking, as you walk, you leave behind a fire trail. And you can combine all these things together to solve different puzzles in this kind of on. Uh, it's not specifically online, but I played it entirely online. Um action rpg that felt like a a zelda clone but a really really fucking good one and uh just in general there was so much content here there was no extra dlc or anything like that the entire game start to finish had a complete story there was even like side quests that were really fun to do where like we funded like a, uh, a mages like uh place like they were they were like training for mages there were like elements where we uh had to get like licenses to be certain classes and like the people would talk down to us until we did it but we were like better than them all the time so like they were talking down to us for no fucking reason whatsoever and uh just a lot of the humor and a lot of the actual gameplay all comes together to make a really solid little indie title that was awesome and worth playing and I would have said that even before I knew that I actually knew the person that made this game. I had no idea at the time of playing this game, in the whole 40 hours that I played this game, that I knew who made this. Like? Yes, like, personally. Um, um, <laughs> so we had no idea. We, um, a long time ago, I'll, I'll make this quick for you, Nick, because you weren't here last week. Um, but a long time ago, we did a podcast um when we were first not podcast sorry we did a stream when we were first starting our streaming like journey and that sort of thing and we would always invite like smaller indie developers into our stream and whatnot and we ended up meeting the guy who made uh bleed and bleed 2 which is a speed running indie game that's really fun it's it's ran a lot of times at gd uh game's done quick and um it has a pretty big community behind it and the guy was like super nice who ended up making the game and they were really fun to talk with and everything and they stayed on the stream with us like the entire time uh they were going to give out their game but we had already bought their games and gave out copies instead like beating them out of it we're like no you came to our stream we're going to buy copies of your game and we're going to give it away to people that are viewing the stream right now because you know you you blessed us with your time. You were like nice enough to come out here and you know, like come talk, chat with us about your game and this, that, and the other. And that's the way we would always do when we had people on. And this guy, uh, he just kept in touch with us throughout the years. And I haven't talked to him in like a year now or two. I, I would say, I'd say around the pandemic was when I stopped being able to talk with him. And it's the same way with a lot of other people that I kept in touch with. But, um, he was like super nice and always like very chill about everything and told us about projects and everything. So I missed out on this one because I hadn't talked with him in a while and I had no idea that he had gone to a new company and he was working on a new game and that Nobody Saves the World was that game. And like I said, even when I was playing this game, I was having so much fun and I had no idea who had made it at the time. I just thought, okay, this is just a random indie game that we found on Game Pass that's super fucking fun and really enjoyable and that's enough for me. Yeah. So uh, when I found out on top of it that we actually knew the person, I was like, okay, well, that's really fucking cool, too. Yeah. <laughs> then I told my friend, I was like, did you know that we knew the person that made this game? He's like, what? And then I showed him. He's like, holy shit. <laughs> Funny as hell. So, so that happened. But yes, Nobody Saves the World. Excellent game. I believe it's on a lot of different uh, systems now because, I mean, it is one of those indie games that like kind of branched out after it was released on Game Pass. Uh, and it's in other places now. Highly recommend looking into this one if you have a chance. It, I think you'll have a lot of fun with it. Okay. Right. I mean, best surprise is Arceus. Again, easy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was just going to knock this category out super fast since I went through all no, of that fine. stuff now. 
No, that's fine. I mean, I can get behind Arceus, like, obviously. Yeah. Um, it is the only one I did play. Doesn't do it, yeah. Doesn't do it like me, but that's the best I can offer. No, that's fine. There weren't that many big surprises this year. Uh, I'm sure if I played a lot more, branched out a lot more, there would have been, but uh, I feel like 2022 was kind of like a transitional year where a lot of people didn't get to do a lot of things. Yeah. And and I was one of them for once. <laughs> well, weird year for like the cycle of the consoles too. Because mm-hmm. um, you know, you're kind of presumably at the end of the life of Switch. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. It's it a supposedly think... we're going into the pro versions of the new consoles, and I'm just like, that's fucking stupid. Yeah, it's they don't need that. Yeah, <laughs> there is supposed it's to okay, be the shortage is over coming out, but I know it's actually you can find consoles out in the wild now. So yeah. Xboxes. Oh no, you can. PS fives have been showing up the last two weeks. Oh. Yeah, very good. So, so there's well, that. It three years, but yeah, it did that's only good. take three years. But that's a surprise. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> best surprise you can buy PlayStation 5. you can actually buy video games now but there's no games to play on it so uh, not really yeah game. mostly I agree <laughs> <laughs> um, you can play so games better on it but there's no specific games other yeah. than like oh yeah no that's a fair assessment uh, th- well there is like it was a launch fucking title <laughs> like the remake of Demon Souls and Returnal you can only play those on PS5 and they're excellent games but like uh, well, Returnal, not so much. Well, no, Returnal I, I, is one of my all-time favorite games of this generation. I'm sorry, you're just wrong. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying, you can play it on more than just the PS5. I agree with you. I think Returnal is one of the main reasons to buy a PS5 if you don't yeah, have a PC absolutely. with 32 gigs of RAM. So, <laughs> oh, okay, okay, we're talking about the PC port. That's probably going to be absolute ass. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Yeah, that's that's a shame too cuz I was like I'll I'll double up on that game. That game is fucking excellent. I'll go through it again on PC this time. It'll probably be way easier. <laughs> oh my god. But um yeah. Yeah. So my choices for this and I, I'm guessing we'll probably all feel the same is Arceus at number 1, uh Gotham Knights at number 2 and then then Nobody Saves the World at number 3. Those are my three choices. Well, we don't differentiate the runners up, but yeah, then it's fine. Just in general, have Gotham yeah. Knights and nobody saves the world. That's what I was trying to say. Yeah, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. What about you, Nick? How do you feel? No, I'm I'm with that. I'm with Arce- RCS taking it. You're not going to die in the Grand Treasonal Sword? No, I, no, no way. No reason to. No. What no. kind of mechanic are you? Ma- I'm I, not. I don't. I don't play <laughs> Grand Treasonal <laughs> games. I see me when the next Forza comes out. Then well, I'll be your man. Grand Turismo, I do not touch. I think you would actually like this one, Nick. I think there's enough here that makes it um, more approachable, uh-huh. uh, as well as just a better overall feeling. Like, it, when it comes to Forza, I'm Forza Horizon all the way. Like, not the numbered Forza. I think the numbered Forza games are kind of mid. Uh, but Forza Horizon's fucking excellent every single oh, time yeah. it releases. Uh, I think that this is better than the last two numbered Forza titles. Interesting. So, yeah. It has this, like, really cool mechanic where you can, like, buy used cars. And, like, as you're playing it and as you're doing, like, missions and everything, uh-huh. uh, the prices and the stock market of cars actually goes, like, up and down and that sort of thing. And you can watch That's it happen. It's, it's super cool. It's super cool the way it's put together. And I think some of the prices are based off of actual prices for the cars in real life. And I'm like, That's neat. That's really neat. Maybe that's why the used car market's so expensive right now. They're going off of Grand Turismo 7. Grand Turismo 7. (laughs) That would make a lot of sense. Uh, Anyways, best surprise when it goes to Pokemon Legends Arceus. Runners up Gotham Knights and nobody saves the world. Arceus is fucking sweeping. (laughs) Arceus sweep. But I think that means the last category we have it in for these ones. So that's fine. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, Biggest disappointment. We've got a. Loaded category this time. Oh, yeah. Uh, Very we loaded. Pokemon Violet and Scarlet, Callisto Protocol, Overwatch 2, Crossfire X, Gundam Evolution, Saints Row Reboot, Sonic Frontiers. I don't know what Brandon's number one. I have a good feeling I know what Brandon's number one for this category would be. What do you think of this? I, uh, <laughs> it's not the obvious. That's the problem. <laughs> what, which one do you think is the obvious one? I think the obvious one is Saints Row Reboot. 
See, I was <laughs> not under Mevo Leaf. My brain, my brain is telling me Crossfire X because neither of us played that game. So Brandon added that in there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, listen, listen. You have to have some form of uh, excitement for something to be disappointed by it. But I did play Crossfire X, and even with my low expectations, it was one of the worst games I played all year. <laughs> I, I will, because I see Crossfire, like, all I can think about is the board game. So, I don't know even no, though Crossfire dude, X is. Dude, it is so bad. But even then, I can't muster enough anger towards the game, because I don't have a tie to the actual game to be like, even though this is objectively the worst game on this list, I put it on here so I could talk about this. Crossfire okay. X is the worst game on this list. It's like a 60 v 60 first person shooter that's a mix of Counter Strike and Call of Duty. And it doesn't work. The hit reg is incredibly bad. The actual game itself, the maps feel either too small or too fucking big. There's abilities like Overwatch 2, which makes it make no fucking sense whatsoever, because you just have these normal guys that somehow have vampire abilities and shit okay. like that. So there's no fucking reason for that. It's a Chinese CSGO knockoff that was actually very good in the 90s slash 2000s when it released and was on, like, their... PCs and that sort of thing, and you could also, like, download it, uh, you know, through VPNs and other such stuff, or through other sites that had it up, and play it on US, you know, servers and that thing. Good game. Good game then. Crossfire X is, like, awful. It just doesn't work. It doesn't work. It's unplayable. It just is bad. It is one of the worst first-person shooters I have ever played. And that's saying something. Were you expecting it to be good? I had tempered expectations because the single player was being made by Remedy. Okay. So, Remedy, as you may know, is a, a developer I really love. I love Remedy games. Uh, you know, that's people that made Alan Wake, people that yes. made Control, that sort of thing. Great games. Great games. Um... <laughs> There, this says this was a hundred percent a paycheck for them. <laughs> oh, probably to make Alan Wake too, more or less. Um, I think from a mechanic standpoint and a gameplay standpoint, nothing is worse on this list than Crossfire X. But no one's heard of it, and no one had expectations, so it can't be biggest disappointment. But um, legitimately, it's, it's fucking awful. <laughs> so that's the reason it's too. here. <laughs> Huh? I said IGN gave it a 2 out of 10. It is definitely 2 out of 10 territory. <laughs> oh, wait, sorry. They gave it a 3 out of 10. They gave the multiplayer a 2 out of 10. There you go. That's it. That's it. Yep. <laughs> That's it. Yep. One of the worst games I played all year. So there you go. Sounds lovely. It was awful. It is not my pick for the biggest disappointment, though. I just needed to talk about this game at some point in time. Okay. That's fair. Yeah, that's fair. Kind of like why Sonic ended up on here, I think. Unless you we'll change your mind and are actually going to like fight for it to take it. What's that? Sonic Frontiers. Oh, that's definitely one of, that like one of my biggest disappointments of, of uh, last year. Oh, I know, but are you are you willing to fight? For I liked it. it. Sorry, that's it. I liked it. <laughs> I I can't. Um, <laughs> I'm my thing is I know there's games on here that were definitely bigger disappointments in Sonic Frontiers. Mm -hmm. I think. My problem is, right, is I went into Sonic Frontiers expecting to be whelmed, and I wasn't. So, like, that, that I guess, like, I guess that's a bigger disappointment for me, personally, because it's, like, I, I don't have a kid, but, like, you send your kid to school and you expected to do, like, the bare minimum, and they can't even <laughs> fucking do that. And you're I, like, damn uh, it! I Son respectfully disagree. I had a lot of fun with Sonic Frontiers. Listen, it's okay to be wrong. It's fun. <laughs> yeah, it is, Nick. You know a lot about that. <laughs> it's fine. The game was bad. But it wasn't bad. It was. It wasn't bad. It was bad. It was bad. What made it bad? Every the, the music was good. I, but like, okay, combat wise, what made it bad for you? Like the I controls, think, the camera. <sighs> okay, the camera. The, the camera was mid. I'll give you that. The camera was the mid. Camera was mid. The camera was mid. You can have that. You can have that. All right? You can have that. But I had a shit ton of fun playing this game on my Steam Deck 
in handheld mode and just chilling, turning my brain off, exploring the world, unlocking new like fast travel points on the fucking guardrails, doing little tiny mini game things, fishing with Big the Cat. I enjoyed it all. Listen, yeah. Sonic Frontiers is bad pizza because even bad pizza, you're like, well, fuck it, it's pi- it's still pizza, but like, there's definitely better. And I, I think my main gripe with Sonic Frontiers is that it tries to do too many things and mm. succeeds at none of them and mm. also cannot even rely on stuff that the franchise is known for to be good at. Okay. So, like, in a lot of ways, it's just a lot of things conflicting and not working, and that kind of is just very jarring. Um, I like the open world concept. They didn't do it very well. I like the obstacles in that open world. They did not do it very well. Um, cyberspace as a concept, cool. Does not work. All what? every every the cyberspace single was awesome. Every single cyberspace level sucks. I every no. single one of them. Nope. Nope. That's and that's immediately fall, where you became discredited right there. They fall into <laughs> the, the, the sonic trap of remember when we were good? Because fucking most of those levels were inspired levels off of old Sonic games or had old Sonic game kind of aesthetic to them. That's the point. That's literally the point of the cyberspace level. Show me the new stuff you can do. Okay. All right. I I think. I want to do new stuff. I think this is the best Sonic game that we've gotten in. Aside from, um, fuck. What was what was that game called? The one made by um, not Sonic Team. Bioware. No, 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 no. Mania. I Mania. think aside from Sonic Mania, this is the best Sonic game we've had since Sonic Adventure 2. Uh, here's the problem with that, is I can't tell you that you're right, but I also can't tell you that you're wrong, because I would bump that up to, like, Sonic Colors. I think Sonic Colors was fine. Right, you know what? Sonic Colors is alright. Sonic Colors is alright. I, I think say, that's like, okay. This, I don't like this game, but you're also correct in saying it's the best Sonic game that we've gotten since Colors. I don't know. I thought there was more to it than Colors. I thought Colors felt like a very paint-by-numbers thing. I liked the things they attempted with Sonic Frontiers. I wouldn't even have this in the top three most disappointing things of looking at this at fucking least list. Sonic Colors succeeded on the things that it tried. All it did was the same thing it had already failed at three other times. But it succeeded this time. But it was boring. But it was... I thought it was fine. I thought it was a very fine game. I thought Sonic Colors was mediocre to okay. I thought this was okay to good at times. No, this this game frustrated the shit out of me a lot. Were you just bad at it? Like, I'm I'm legitimately curious. No. (laughs) Because the game didn't even explain itself half the time. It doesn't even know That's what the, the fuck. That's the point. You the game aren't supposed, even know... to... No, You're listen. supposed to figure it out. No, listen. The game doesn't even understand the concept of parrying. That's not a parry. That's a reflect. They explain parrying to you as you got to time it correctly when the thing hits you. No, you can just fucking hold the button and take a parry stance and just reflect any time. But it won't tell you that. Did you not realize that if you actually do time it correct when the thing hits you, which has a very small window, it is an actual parry? Because then you immediately go into an attack after you parry the hit? It doesn't matter when you can just fucking hold it. But my point is, you're explaining something and saying the game tells you it's this and it's not. It's not that because you chose not to play it that way. It literally is that. Like, that's what I'm trying that's to tell design, you. But that's how they designed the game to be. A parry could, is not a thing that I press and hold. It is if a you thing press and that hold, I you play baby mode of parrying. If you just no. press it instantly, you're able to get faster hits off well, why and do I, instant no. attacks. Because why, no, why am I going to time when I can just hold it and attack anyway? Because you're a baby bitch. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't even make any sense. That's like saying, why would I just hold the block button? Why wouldn't I just hold the block button in a Dark Souls game instead of parrying? But just the same fucking thing. No, because like, you get chip doesn't... damage in that, and you could be like knocked off. I'm talking specifically to when you have to parry for the second boss, and you're like, oh, you better time it right. No, I will just sit here and fucking hold it, and then oop, I can attack the boss now. Wonderful. Okay. It's dumb. The game I understand. Bad. I understand what your issues are with this game. It's okay. No, because you just think I'm bad at it when the actual reality is the game is not good. So far, you haven't presented an answer that proves me wrong. But that's okay. Um, 
I'm just asking for a it. game to explain itself correctly, and it doesn't. Neither does, like, Dark Souls. Neither does Bloodborne. Dark Souls is a pretty extreme example. I'm about to say, you're, talk- <laughs> you're going from an adult game to a game presumably being played by children. <laughs> Bro, if you still think children are playing Sonic, I got news for you. <laughs> I'm just saying. The gameplay was repetitive, just rinse and repeat, except for the one island, which fucking sucked. Um, that island did suck. That's fair. The uh, what the one with the towers? Yeah. That one's trash. Uh, mostly because the game punishes you if you go too fast, and there were so many times that like I just dashed off of a... Because the game Power. was like, do you want to dump all your powers into fast? And I'm like, I, yeah. I'm Sonic. Why wouldn't I? <laughs> oh, I have another gripe with that. I don't know how long you want me to keep going on about Sonic Frontiers, but I can I'm, keep I'm going loving for it. a while. I'm loving it. I want to listen to this. This is good. This is uh, good. The, the, the sections with wall climbing do not work. Uh, God forbid you change perspective because all of a sudden uh, right becomes straight down for some reason and just doesn't work. Um... Oh, I had to change the game from... I played this on. Oh, uh, PS5. I okay. had to change it from uh, fidelity mode to, to performance mode because the game ran very choppily and had a lot of drop frames. Wait, and not run very good. wait a moment. Hold on And a then I switched, I switched to performance and it was straight 60, baby. So my question is, these moments where you were having bad times with wall running and this, that, and the other, were you in fidelity mode? No. Okay. All right. I'm just checking. I'm just checking. Because, like, all right. So, this is my experience with the game. I played it on PC. This is my experience with the game. I didn't have any of the issues aside from the bad camera, which cannot be argued against, that you are presenting me with. And I mean this 110% when I say this. I had no issues with wall running. I had no issues with, like, things not working the way they were supposed to. I had some of the sonic jank where it'd be like, oh, shit, I I don't think I should have fallen off at that point and everything. But that was few and far between when I was actually playing the game. So I'm actually genuinely curious if the console version is worse than the PC version. I'm Maybe. genuinely I mean, curious. Like, my girlfriend I'm not was making... playing on um okay, my girlfriend was playing on the Switch and she was mm-hmm. having the same issues as me. And then friends of mine who are also playing it on various consoles also mm-hmm. had the same issues as me. So I don't know if the PC version is just better. I don't know either, and I'm not making it as an excuse. I'm just saying from my experience, I didn't have your experience. And I'm very confused by it. Yeah. Like legitimately, I am confused by it. Because the reason why I was saying it just sounds like you don't know what you were doing when you were playing the game is because a lot of the ways you described it is not the way the game worked. And I don't understand why you had that experience. But I do think maybe if you were like having intermediate frame skips and this, that, and the other, that like throwing you off or having like something just not work correctly because of the console or the way it's optimized on console, that would make a lot of sense for certain things not connecting. Because I'm pretty sure the physics are tied to the actual gameplay and the, the speed of the game. So when it comes down to that, that's what makes me wonder if there's inherently a problem with the console version. And that Maybe. I and that I didn't experience, and and that's that's totally fine if that is the case because I can't talk about the console version. I have no idea, but I didn't have the issues, and I didn't see the problems technically that you're talking about. So, um, yeah. Which is fine because I think even if this game ran good, mm-hmm. it still wouldn't be very good. Um, and I think my main issue with it is that it buries its story in like. Egg memos, they're called. Which <laughs> not only that, but it's just so memo. the story is so melodramatic in this which, game. From what I can gather, by the way, <laughs> egg memos can't be found in the world. Can only get them from fishing with Big the Cat. <laughs> if you don't ever find Big the Cat like I did until the last world, you will be very confused. Wait, and I was. Did you not see like the war and the fucking chows that were actually chaoses and? the the whole like genocide of their planet did you not see any no. of that oh my god oh my god really holy shit dude that's fucking hilarious i okay 
once we're done this podcast, I gotta tell you something that just fucking <laughs> threw me for a loop at the very end of the game and made me go, this game is stupid. Did you not see, like, all the people that legitimately... Okay, I'm I'm not even kidding when I said this. There were characters that you would save that then after you completed their minigame, they committed suicide. Yes. No, I saw that. <laughs> okay, all right, I'm just checking. Yeah, I saw that, and I saw, like, the chaos-looking <laughs> things that were, like, <laughs> dancing around and escaping the threat in the sky, and the, the titans are just, they're possessed. And then they just fucking yeah, killed sky them. bodies. <laughs> but then it takes a hard right at the very end, and I'm like, what are we doing? <laughs> If you had been experiencing all this along the way, I can't, I can't imagine how this game's, like, sudden change to super fucking dark caught you off guard. <laughs> yes, I got Whiplash. Dude, the game is so dark. It's so dark. That's why I'm sitting here when you're, like, for a kid's game, and I'm like, bruh, you're like, characters kill themselves in this game. <laughs> kind of, sort of, yeah. It's <laughs> kind of short-sighted on the Sonic side of things. Because <laughs> yeah. obviously, I mean, Sonic just had two movies. Of course, it's going to be a kids like yeah. targeted game. I do agree, but but I got to actually experience the story, unlike Nick. And I was like, "This is dark as fuck," and I kind of like it. <laughs> we'll talk because okay. I'm, I'm lost in the proverbial <laughs> Sonic sauce. <laughs> Oh my god, this is hilarious to me that you didn't get to experience the story. Oh my god, I can only imagine, Nick. I, I it, This explains so much. I saw Knuckles taking him a bunch and be like, you're my army now. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> and then Big the Cat somehow was like, I went to the fridge and I ended up here. His way into the fucking game. Dude, did you, did you, does this mean you missed all the things where, like, their souls were trapped in between and everything also? I mean, I mean the main characters were, like, trapped in between the wheel, the real world and, like, the cyber world, but, like... You didn't see just how much their souls got fucked over because of what was going no. on? Oh my god, holy shit. Okay, alright, 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 oh my god. <laughs> I, I really wish I could have put this game in best and worst story for two totally different reasons. <laughs> oh I my god. Do you want me to play this game like Dark Souls though, Mike? Because most of the story I've written on like pamphlets that like somebody haphazardly <laughs> just kind of threw everywhere. And you gotta pick it up like do not engage. Okay, cool. <laughs> Sounds like it. Yeah. And then what do you probably like save at fires and things like that, I think. Sonic's out in the frontier. <laughs> you do actually kind of save at bonfires in this game. He's not wrong. <laughs> so it literally is Sonic Dark Souls. <laughs> kind of. If you were like a pinball in Dark Souls. <laughs> would you call this the Dark Souls of Sonic games? I would call this the Sonic games of Dark Souls, actually. <laughs> and there is a difference. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anyways, I think we have a couple other games to talk about out here. Um, have you figured out what my actual pick is going to be for the biggest disappointment? I guess oh, Gundam. Is that not Gundam? No, it's Gundam. It's 100% oh, okay. Gundam. Yeah. I, I thought so. You sounded very upset about it. I'm still upset at Gundam. <laughs> I'm still <laughs> mad at them. <laughs> you can be. It's fine. I'm, just, I, I'm, I'm more sad than I am mad. <laughs> no, I'm both. I'm absolutely both. Should I should I go into Gundam? Should I should I do that real quick? I guess. Why not? All right, Gundam Evolution for the first week was one of the best games I played all year in multiplayer. It was so much fucking fun, and it was so enjoyable. And and then, and then they literally made it pay to win. It was like if Overwatch Two was even more of a pay to win game, and that mm -hmm. stuck. That sucks so hard because they locked units behind literally paying for them or grinding out for like several months at a time to unlock them. And that was incredibly unacceptable. And the way you had to grind them, you only were able to get so much a day 
So it was literally like, oh, do you want to have a roster that's big enough to actually compete in this game? That's going to take you about four months, which is going to lead into the next season, which then will release more units that will probably be even more overpowered. So you'll have to grind for four more months, and you're always going to be behind unless you give us $10. Yeah. That's essentially what happened. And it was just not good. It was not good when they released that patch. Um it already had some balancing issues, just in general, but once they released the patch where it was like, it made the community be like, yeah, why aren't you paying $10 for this free-to-play game so that you can compete in the game? And I'm just like, do you not understand the problem with that? This game is free-to-play. If you want people to actually stay in your free-to-play game, you have to have everyone in a competitive free-to-play game on equal ground, on equal footing. <clears throat> But if you have units that are just outright better than everything a free-to-play player can have, that's not going to keep your player base. That's going to cause you to hemorrhage money, hemorrhage players, and to completely destroy something that could have been really fucking good and was really fucking good. Gundam Evolution was a better Overwatch than e Overwatch. And I'm not talking about Overwatch 2. I'm talking about just the entire series. It was so good the the laning the zoning the the maps the everything the characters all of it and then if you really like gundam which i do that makes it even better because it was a good gundam game mm -hmm. the problem was they got greedy very quickly and they made it where you couldn't you couldn't compete anymore after a while. It was just like, oh, did the enemy team spend $10, $15, $20, $40, God forbid, and get every single character? All right, well, we lose. That's it. We just lose. So if you started up a game and it showed you like the, the character picking part like you would see in something like Overwatch, and you see that the enemy team has picked two or three of the characters that are the paid characters, you might as well quit. And that's what people did. And there was no way to have a autofill system, so then the game would forfeit you, and you would take a loss because someone quit in your game and not you quitting. So then that completely ruined any more of the competitive edge of the game because you would take losses automatically if even your teammates quit out of the fucking game. So because of that, and because of the pay-to-win nature that they introduced in a patch after it released, it just became a cash grab from being a very solid multiplayer game that was incredibly good and it just it just went downhill from there and it just they they now are at the point where they have so few players that it's it's a nothing burger of a game it's nothing it's going to be mm -hmm. a lot like other games where by the end of next year probably or middle of this year the pc version is probably going to shut down and they're going to be like oh no one likes gundam that's what this taught us not oh we're fucking stupid suits that don't know any better from our heads from our asses about how monetization should be put into a game. We're the fucking idiots. No, they're going to think that the game itself was the problem when it wasn't the game itself. It was the way you fucking monetized it. You fucking troglodytes. And that's a problem because I want good Gundam games. And this was a good Gundam game, but Bandai Namco fucked it. Yeah. And that makes me really angry. It makes me really yeah. angry. So there you go. Okay. Fuck Gundam evolution. Uh, Pokemon Violet and Scarlet. Honestly, I think this is one that I don't think necessarily deserves this category, but I think it deserves to be talked about in this category. I don't know how you guys feel about it. Violet and Scarlet? Yeah, th yeah, that's why I said what? You think it should win? Uh, I don't think it should be first, but I I think it's I think it might be top three territory. Okay, I mean, we could talk, we could talk about that. I mean, I think my thing with this is like it's a glitchy, unpolished mess. But I, I think, like we talked about when we played the game, like at the core of its game, it's fun. Mm -hmm. It's still mostly a functional game. No, like, I, 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 I disagree. I don't. I, I, I think absolutely. Disagree. Yeah, I don't disagree with that either. I can't tell you the number of times it crashed on me. I, I can't really tell crash. you that I've crashed. I think I crashed six times, maybe maybe eight. If I'm if I'm not remembering correctly, but I crashed a lot of times, and a lot of the times when I crashed, it didn't seem to be for any discernible reason. <laughs> right. Yeah. On I mean, top of that, I'm very 
when it comes to frame rate, you know how I can be sensitive to frame rate, and oh. how I'm also a stickler for frame rate. This game ran at less than 20 FPS. Yeah, it, it still it, runs at less than 20 yeah, FPS. Yeah, yeah. It's not enjoyable. It's not enjoyable I mean, I at the far. frame rate that it runs at. I, I enjoyed myself <laughs> with this game. I mean, I think it was a fun game. Like I said, I think my issues were like, yeah, it's an unpolished mess. I mean, it's a disappointment in that way. Is it the biggest disappointment? No. I don't think it's that big. But I think versus the rest of the series, yes, it absolutely is. Especially coming off RCS, which is such a much better polished game that you would think that it came out after. The, but like I said, I think the core of this game is still solid. I still had a lot of fun with it. I do think that the open world stuff works well. It I does. think it's a well built a well built world <laughs> in terms of like how things are distributed. Um, it has you know, a like, very good idea of a Pokemon game in it. Yeah, at least it yeah. needed at least another year in the oven, unfortunately. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um but, like but... Said, at least in terms of what they were <clears throat> setting out to do in terms of how you played the game. That worked. But like I said, mm-hmm. functionally, technically, no. No, it didn't. I think that to give Violet and Scarlet a pass is a complete disservice. I think that it deserves at least top three <clears throat> for biggest disappointment. Not necessarily for the gameplay, right? Because the gameplay is, it's fine. It's fine for what it is. But I think that you tackle so many technical issues along the way, so much slowdown, so much bad frame rate, such a bad experience in the way that it is played not because of the gameplay itself but because of the way that the game itself plays because of how shittily it was thrown together that i think it is one of the bigger disappointments as as a whole if you look at it and look at something like any of the past pokemon games if you look at this game side by side even in th- with things like x or y or uh sun and moon which didn't run that well to begin with at all uh, and then you look at this those look like fucking masterpieces compared to the way that this game runs uh even sword and shield compared to the way that this game runs th- th- those games are masterpieces this game is outright unacceptable in the way that it runs it should not have been released the way it is the fact that it has not had any updates other than the first update because i did check there hasn't been a second update you're you're right about that mike at least not that i can find online That's um I'm sure there wasn't one yeah. yeah i think you i think you're right at least from my little bit of googling about it the fact that there hasn't been an attempt to fix the issues with this game is just unacceptable and it just proves how lazy and how little of a fuck Game Freak gives about its, I mean, it, not only its community, but its own, like, I guess, um, credibility. When you, when you look at it, like, side by side, any of the other games. I would say, if Arceus did not release in 2022, Pokemon Violet and Scarlet would be easily, easily panned by every person, period. But people are just kind of like, whatever, we don't care. I mean, Arceus came out. Arceus was really good. So it's clearly just a, just a little just a little fluke, just an issue. And, and I don't think that's fair. I think this game was clearly shat out, and I don't think they're going to do anything to fix it. I think the way it is right now is the way it will always be. And that is unacceptable. If this was released in any other generation than the current gaming generation, this would have been recalled. Because it's unacceptable the way it was that the way it, it currently plays right now. I I, I just I, I I just think it's that bad. I think it's that bad. Do I think it's number one? No. But I do think it's top three, easily. You have to have expectations to be disappointed. And Arceus gave us high expectations, even with the issues that it had from its graphics and that sort of thing. And yet somehow Violet and Scarlet is worse. And that is unacceptable. I'm thinking of a good response. I don't have one right now. <laughs> As I said, I think I, my 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 biggest thing is I think the gameplay is a saving grace for it for this list. That's all. But what's that? I mean, it's something we can hash out as we go through. Yeah. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Yeah, that's fine. Um, I, Protocol. Yeah, this game this game sucked ass through a straw. It does suck. <laughs> I thought so, you didn't uh, mind it when you played it though, Nick. 
I thought you were kind of I, I would go back and play more when you finished it. I, he did. Well, yeah, that's I that's did. my guess. He did. <laughs> I did. And it's like literally like I was debating on buying Copy it. Copy and paste. Or not. Copy and paste. Am I yeah. right? I was mm-hmm. debating on buying it or not. And then I was like, hey, because my, my buddy who finished it was like, you can just borrow it if you want. And I was like, yeah, sure. So I did that. And yeah, just um, bad. It's the same not thing over good. and over and over again. Yeah. Uh, it has a very heavy emphasis on melee, which the game was not not like advertised as that. And the heavy emphasis on melee just makes it not enjoyable. It just makes it so it's like, okay, punch, punch, dodge, shoot, dodge. Oh, the dodge button didn't work because it didn't feel like working this time. Sure, fine, whatever. All yeah. right, I got hit. Uh, oh, I got hit from off screen. Oh, I'm dead. Gotta try that again. And then it, it really sucks. It, it's bad. It's real it, bad. <clears throat> it also seemed like the team's focus wasn't on the correct... So, like, obviously... The big thing about this was like, oh, it's the second coming of Dead Space. It's got yes. people from the original Dead Space working on it, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And I think what the problem is with that is it tried too much at times to be like that formula, but then also kind of forgot what it was supposed to be doing in the first place. Um, yeah. Because it does feel very much so like great value Dead Space. It does. <laughs> That's but, such a good way to put it. But at the same, me that we don't use like the like the titles. Like I always just name the game of the year episodes, just game of the year, whatever. Oh yeah. And uh, there's been so many good titles that we could use for these if we're using the normal name. <laughs> um, <laughs> but like everything that this game tries to do, that's like continuing of that, just doesn't work. And no. it focused too much on, like, the death animations for some reason and, like, the goriness of Dead Space. Which... And then it cut some out and sold them back to you as a DLC plan. <laughs> you weren't supposed to say that. <laughs> um, but, like, that – I don't think in any of my conversations I ever had about Dead Space was like, oh, man, I really love Dead Space 1 and 2 because the death scenes are very gross and visceral. The and only I'm like, one I've ever heard people the eye? about is the eye. Yeah, yeah, yes. sick. That shit's awesome. <laughs> that shit is very nerve wracking. Also, that you reminded me of it again, which I'm glad it's not in Dead Space <laughs> One, but two. So I'll just have to wait to do that again in 4K, probably. Um, <laughs> but like, what made Dead Space One so good for me was the the feelings that it, it invoked in you, and kind of just the way the whole game was designed, not from how you died, but how you actually survived, and how the enemies maybe died. Oh yeah, and kind of the feelings of of stress and dread that you had because oh shit, I'm running low on ammo for this, or do I use a power node on this instead of the door? You know that kind of a thing. And then they make close to protocol, kind of bouncing off of all of that greatness, and we're like, what if we just didn't do those things and just made it like a horror action game? Than what it's yeah, supposed her to be. beat him up. That's like yeah. essentially what it is, and it's this not should have been good. on best fighting game of the year instead of <laughs> Sifu. I don't know why Sifu made it when this clearly there's probably frame data. There's got to be frame data. Uh, oh, yeah. Also, the the other big problem too is if you played this on consoles, the game would ruin the jump scares for you too, because you normally what? How 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 did it ruin them? Oh, this is what's wonderful, Brandon. Okay. So you know how, like, on PC, the game <laughs> runs like shit because they couldn't figure out how to cache information? Yes. Same thing on consoles. Oh. Which is great. Okay. So what will happen is, since it doesn't preload anything, you'll be running along, and, like, you'll be walking, and all of a sudden, like, this, like you'll get, like a, a, like, a half second of kind of, like, stalling and juddering. And you're like, oh, maybe the game's saving itself? Nope, it's loading the jump scare. That happens on PC also. That happens on PC also. Yep, 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 yep. So they it's just the game then. It wasn't a it wasn't a case of Unreal Engine. It was literally just the game being poorly made. So like you you knew when you were about to be scared because the game was like Hey, oh, fuck. Gotta load, gotta load. <laughs> I gotta load the scaries first. Give me a second. Load, load those spookies. Yeah, I gotta, I, gotta, I gotta load these spooky scaries, and now, behold, oh, you are ready for them? Incredible. <laughs> what? How, how? Could you, how could you have known? <laughs> oh, you knew I was about to scare you. You're kidding. You're pulling my leg. I, I got you. 
Yeah. So, like, that's my main issue with that game. And, or one of my main issues with that game. It also controls, like, shit. It does. But... The, like I said, the dodge button works. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a suggestion. The dodge button has a mind of its own and definitely is like, oh, you pressed me. What if I didn't do that? Because <laughs> it's, it's the thumbstick. And that's the, yes. that's the weird thing. But yeah, that is kind of actually silly. Um, but I did not love this game at all. And actually, obviously, was very... I think in the months that it was announced, I was like pretty excited for it because... I love Dead Space, and I was like, oh my god, new Dead Space. And then Dead Space Remake got announced, I was like, oh my god, even more Dead Space. So I was like, this is going to be my kind of palate, my, my palate cleanser, my taste test, the appetizer, if you will, for Dead Space Remake, because that comes out in about two weeks from today. Um, and it just was not at all what I wanted from it, which is very disappointing when you kind of back it up with a pedigree that you did. So. I mean, honestly, personally, like... For me, Cluster Protocol is probably my biggest disappointment on this list. Yeah. Um, I was very excited for this game, and the closer we got to release, it just deflated every ounce of energy I had for it. So I remember about by the time it came out, I was like, well, maybe I'll pick it up when it's on sale. Uh-huh. And yeah. like post-release, I, I, I think I've quietly gone to. I'm not even remotely interested anymore. I'm playing it when it's on Game Pass. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. That's all, that's like all I just, care about. They, they like it is, it's one that's just like you said, you know, the, they came with a great pedigree and like, you know, a lot of hype and mm-hmm. there were the Dead Space people and this is the Dead Space revival that we wanted to do and and then it's just like Yeah. yeah. It is just, just a like wet they, fart. It is a wet fart. Yeah. It's <laughs> like they, they took all the wrong messaging about what people wanted and yeah. We had to get away from EA because they were holding us back. By the way, we brought EA with us. <laughs> yeah by the way yeah, surprise we are part of an evil corporation um so yeah i i think personally for me that would be my biggest disappointment this year uh-huh. just because i expected so much of that because the only other things that kind of register for me in this um in this one is like both uh overwatch 2 and um Obviously, I already put it down with like Sonic Frontiers, but those are like really the only three things that I feel greatly disappointed me this year. Although Sonic Frontiers, I didn't have high expectations for, and Overwatch Two has been a meme to me ever since it was announced. So, like, I don't think I was expecting a good experience from that to begin mm-hmm. with. So, like, you, you kind of don't expect anything it's kind of hard to be disappointed when you don't get anything whereas like with Callista protocol i was expecting the bar was set very very high for me huh. um and it just did not meet which surprises me that like like saints row reboot isn't your highest or if it might be i don't know oh absolutely um, not uh, no i i okay you know from the beginning i said saints row reboot is going to be fucking awful there's never been a time that I've said this game isn't going to be awful. True. I didn't That's have fair. any interest in it to be disappointed. It just <laughs> okay. was as bad as I thought it would be, essentially. Okay. That's fair enough. So, like, I mean, they, they just... I guess I can jump into Saints Row if you want me to, and then I'll come in back to Overwatch yeah. 2, because I actually want to talk about that one as well. Um, so, Saints Row Reboot. Um, the, the biggest issue with this game was they took everything that made Saints Row uh, an endearing, interesting game that had it stand out which was basically the law so random adult swim type humor and they replaced it with capitalism bad and and let's have some kind of take on the world while not doing so and then it just didn't land like you could do that in a way that's like okay i I see what you're kind of going for here and they have done that before in like the earlier saints rose but they tried to do that here but they did it with like a complete straight face and i swear like a sailor and they put me to shame with the amount of just f-bombs they dropped for no reason whatsoever and even like the colorful way they said like dialogue made no sense at all it it i i felt like when i was listening to the dialogue of this game i was just shouting at kids to get off my lawn because it just felt way too I don't know what is what is the fucking generation we're in now. Like it felt like it was made for that generation. 
Yeah, you know, like, where we're gonna talk about our soy lattes and and our our fucking you do our not get old man right debt now. and this this sort of shit like that. I don't know. It was so bad. It's so bad. It's so bad. But I expected it to be so bad, so I couldn't like you know be more disappointed in it because I already didn't have any expectations. I'd say the only thing that did stand out that made me like actually put this on this list is the fact that. Not only was it disappointing from a story standpoint and from a character standpoint, it also ran like complete ass. So it got put on this list because if you make a game and the game does things worse than the past games that came out that were six years ago, uh, that's that's when you get put on this list. And then I think uh, that's that's why this game is here. Like uh, it would. It, they did away with a lot of animations. They did away with a lot of things that made the game feel more alive. It's like you'd hit cars now, and they just kind of like swerve to the side a little bit or whatever. It didn't have the same impact as like the past games and whatnot. And it just wasn't funny. The dialogue was awful, and the characters were completely unlikable. But not in a sense where it's like they're so unlikable, they loop back around to being likable, which is what Saints Row 2 and 3 were able to do. But this game's just, they're so obnoxious, you don't want to hear them talk. <laughs> okay. I, 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 literally in the one of the first missions, they talk about what car they should steal, and one of the people that's working with them says, we shouldn't steal that car because of the carbon emissions that that car puts out. We should steal a hybrid instead. Damn. And that that's what passes for humor in this game. I mean, so if I could just play Devil's Advocate really, really quick... Were they like trying to make fun of that? No, hundred okay. percent oh, serious. Okay, hundred percent serious. The guy was like straight up, like being serious. The character was, and the other two guys were like, "Oh, okay." Like the meathead characters were like, "Oh, okay," and like the nerd character was just like, well, "We should do this instead." And like it brought the other characters around to be like, "Oh, that makes more sense," uh, uh, uh. you know, and. Not like something you would expect, like where like it, it, you know, like Johnny Gat or someone would like just fucking elbow that kid and be like, "Bro, shut the fuck up. We're stealing car. What does it matter what the carbon emissions are, or whatever, you know?" Or making fun of that kid. That that kid was a hundred percent one of the gang leaders, and he does a lot of dialogue like that throughout the entire game. Okay, and it's bad. It's real bad. I mean, or I so. could see if it was like a trap, like getting into the hybrid car was part of some elaborate scheme. No, like, no, it comes back to it. It comes back to it, I think, because of, um, uh, I don't know. I don't remember exactly what it was. Maybe like low gas mileage or something later on. And he's like, I told you we should have taken the hybrid. And it's just like, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I don't remember exactly what it was. But it's just like, uh, I don't know. It's bad. It's just, it's just, uh, it's awful. But I expected it to be awful, so I can't be disappointed in how awful it is. What I didn't expect to be awful was some things I actually played here. That My top three picks on this list, and I'm about to move into one of them. You remember how I told you, Nick, that, like, I think you're being too harsh on Overwatch 2? Uh-huh. I'm so sorry. Ah. I'm, I'm so very sorry. So, I expected this game to get better you know to have updates you know to do something you know other than release new skins and new battle pass every few months that would make it be like okay feel essentially like the way it was presented it felt like they were going to do something like fortnite where if yeah. you know a lot about fortnite I've, I've always played fortnite and fortnite always has these events they always have these things that happen and everything but even the event that they had for Halloween in Overwatch 2 was just a very short single mission, which was okay. It was okay. And then a rehash of all the old missions yep. from the last few years of Overwatch 1. So we just kind of got the same exact thing again. Yep. So again, it was more of the same. Now, I do disagree by saying that the like it just feels like a watch one with a two in there instead. And I do still disagree with that because I do think that the nerf to tanks and the five V five makes it a whole different beast. 
However, they did nothing to move past the initial investment of changing that up. They've done nothing since the game released to make it feel like a standout sequel. This is a case of, I jumped the gun because I was interested and really liked the feel of the game when it first released. I really liked the feel of the 5v5 now. It felt felt like a better game, and I was enjoying it because of that. And then that phase wore off, and I realized they weren't adding more content. And as mm-hmm. they decided to not add more and more content, it then just felt like the same launch of Overwatch 2 just drawn out forever and continuing to try and milk people with battle passes and new characters being locked behind battle passes and it got to the point where I just did not care anymore and that point came way quicker than it did with Overwatch 1 they were able to keep at least player investment in Overwatch 1 for a much longer period because I feel like they actually added things Overwatch 2, in the six months I think that it's been out now, it feels like it's been out one month and it hasn't changed a damn bit. Yep. And that is my main issue with Overwatch 2. My biggest three disappointments on this list are Gundam, Overwatch 2, and Pokemon Violet and Scarlet. I think, from looking at these things from both gameplay and technical points of view... The the technicality points of view is Pokemon Violet and Scarlet, so it's not number one for me. But the technical issues with Violet and Scarlet are so egregious that it's just in an unacceptable state that has not been changed since its release. And it's probably going to remain in that state. And that's my biggest problem with Violet and Scarlet. They aren't attempting to make it better. That's also my biggest problem with Overwatch 2. It's in the same state it was when it fucking launched, and they have not attempted to make it better, and they've just been lazy the entire fucking time and milking it for all that it's worth because it's Overwatch. Just like Pokemon is milking it for all that it's worth because it's fucking Pokemon. And then my biggest issue with Gundam is they did change the game, and they changed it for the worse. And they continue to play upon the people they got from the beginning of the game until now, making them lose so many players, but not caring because they have those wells that will dip into their pockets and pay any amount of money. So all they're going to do is suck those people dry and then close the game down. And that's why Gundam is my pick for number one. And then Overwatch and Pokemon Violet and Scarlet are the runners-ups, in my opinion. I mean, if I was going to pick two off the top of my head, I'd probably go Callisto and Gundam. Callisto's definitely there for me. Um, Gundam, I will also agree with. Um, Pokemon Violet and Scarlet, I will say I will I will not fully agree with that because I did still have a fun time with that game, despite the issues that it had. Mm-hmm. Um, and just like I, you didn't have all the problems that I had in Sonic Frontiers, I didn't have nearly the amount of problems that you had in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. And that's fair. Um, you you know. have updated your Switch, so that is something to keep in mind. I still have the original day one release of the Nintendo Switch. I, my Switch is no. just the Animal Crossing Switch, which is, I mean, similar to I'm pretty the sure that's one. a better battery and a slightly higher clock speed. That was before this, no. Because it's, it, really? okay. it's the old style. It's the Yes, it's the old style. I thought that Switch was box. the Red Box. Nope. It was Red Box for Animal Crossing. No, nope. You should at least have the better battery, I think. I think it has I'm a better sure battery. But the one with the adjusted oh, okay. clock speed is the one that's in the smaller OLED? vertical. Yeah. Well, the OLED does have the adjusted clock speed. Mm. Um, so, correct. Um, but, I mean, I have an OG Switch, and I didn't have nearly as many problems as you did, Brandon. Do yeah. you have yours installed on uh, the internal, or do you have it installed on, like, an SD? SD. I have it on the internal, so... I'm just trying to figure out what could be the issue. I just I know. Mean, theoretically, it should run better on the internal. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Yeah. That's why I, I've had so many issues with the game. Um, do you play it mostly in handheld or on TV? I play it. I played it 90 percent on a uh, TV. I think Maybe I was 95. Really close to 50 50. I, I think I'm gonna say about the same with you, Mike. I was like a little of column A, a little of column B. Yeah, because I've been. I've been a lot more portable with my Switch over the last year or two. I know for sure. Um, I I don't know. My main problem with Pokemon is I don't think that it should get a pass 
just because the game was fun. Because, I mean, so are so many other Pokemon games. So is fucking Arceus. And it wasn't a technical just disaster. And it was released Uh in the same year. And I just think that the amount of issues on a technical level with Violet and Scarlet does make it completely unacceptable in the state that it was released in. And then on top of it, like I said, my main choice for the reasons why I chose the games I did is there has been no attempt at making these games better. A cluster protocol at the end of the day, it's a single player game, one and done, it's gone, it's a wet fart in the wind, it's whatever. But these games that I have listed all have some kind of staying power. Pokemon is just such a long game, you can constantly come back to it, you can catch them all, you can go get your shinies, you can go do whatever, you can put dump hundreds of hours into that game. Cluster protocol is like six and a half hours, seven hours at most, and you're done. You've had that bad experience, it's fucking gone. Whatever. Uh, Pokemon Valley and Scarlet, you're going to keep coming back to it, and if they aren't going to update it or fix the issues with it, whenever they release DLC, which you know they fucking will, you're still going to have those same damn issues. And then Gundam, they just made it worse. And Overwatch 2, they just haven't changed it since fucking day one, aside from adding, like, characters that barely get fucking tested. Or Mm -hmm. characters that get completely removed from the game. (laughs) Like Bastion. Bastion was completely removed for, like, four weeks. And then, yep. (laughs) A bunch were actually done, yeah. Mm -hmm. See, I don't think, my thing is, too, I don't think Pokemon Violet's gonna remain updated. We know there's DLC coming. Yeah, it's they're going to put the system. DLC in, but I don't think they're going to do anything from a technical standpoint. I'll I be very that. surprised if they actually fix the game. But I'm still 100% on Callisto Protocol. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, I mean, that's probably my number one for this year as well. Okay. And my I number do, one's I mean, Gundam. I what you're saying. <laughs> you know, it is like it's a six-hour game, but, you know, it's... You know, when you have games that, like, step out from the cookie-cutter stuff that we get, like, it is really disappointing to have something that is high profile to just kind of, like, wet fart itself right out of, like, importance. Because, it, I mean, it, it it brings that whole genre back. Like, it, like, just, I mean, especially to... Wait, are you trying to say horror genre has been, been gone? I think it's the biggest load of bullshit I've heard in a long time. No, I just say it's Absol- bullshit. I think that's absolute bullshit. I think the horror genre is thriving more than it ever has in recent years. Damn horror has been getting good shit. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Uh, I mean, Village was, like, fucking close to Game of the Year territory, which was fucking excellent. Um, You take the remakes of Resident Evil 2, Resident Evil 3. Granted, Resident Evil 3 should have been part of Resident Evil 2. Like I said before, you add those things together. You've got the new Silent Hill games that were just announced that actually look really good. Uh, There's a lot of good horror stuff that's been released. Callisto Protocol looked pretty good, too, and look how that turned out. And, I, I mean... Yeah, it's Resident Evil 2 and 3. I mean, they were good games with the remakes. Like, where's all the innovation in horror? I mean, Scorn existed. The Quarry existed. And it, it, Scorn and sucked. Scorn was, Scorn was garbage. <laughs> so... <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. It's innovation. I didn't say it was good innovation. I just said it existed. But give me a good one <laughs> that's not like Resident Evil, Silent Hill, or Five Nights at Freddy's. So like... there was a really good game that released last year that I haven't actually had a chance to talk about this yet. But there was a game called The Mortuary Assistant that existed that came out last year. It's very interesting. I would I don't know when you'll ever be able to play it, but that was a really cool game. Um, there's another game that is called Fuck. Let me see if I can remember the name of it. But I mean, if you keep on like games. That's it's just proving exactly what I'm saying. Like, where's where's our big AAA horror games that are not Resident Evil or Silent Hill? Where's our Plus big AAA good games? And it's Jets. I mean, technically, you know what? No, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do it on a technicality. But technically, if you haven't played uh, Plague Tale Requiem, it is a stealth horror game. <laughs> I mean, Even the horror games that we got last year actually fumbled. Like, we got the Evil Dead game. I played that game. Oh, you know what? I should have put that on this list. I, oh, I'm sad about that game. Uh, <laughs> uh, Dark Pictures Anthology, the fourth game, Devil in Me, bad. Really bad, because it just didn't work. But Damn, man. The horror games were exciting, like Resident Evil 4. It's like, oh my goodness. I would har- barely call Resident Evil 4 a horror game. It was exciting, though. I mean, the farther down the Resident Evil train you go, 
yeah. Blue Plus Horror. I, I feel like Resident Evil 4 was the turn away from horror for the Resident Evil games. Yeah. It still had its moment. Yeah, I but... agree. I agree. I agree. Um, anyways, we gotta we gotta start weeding stuff out of this category though. Um Crossfire X, I think you pretty much Oh yeah, I just wanted to talk about how bad it was. Um I mean, Statistically, it is the worst, worst game on this list. Are we really just down to? Let's look, look at this a different way. Are we down to it being Pokemon, Callisto, Overwatch, or Gundam? Yes. Nobody has any sure. favor in the other two. Yeah, I don't care about you, the other two. Do you want to fight for Sonic, Nick? No. Okay. <laughs> I'll back you. I'll just be like, it's Sonic Adventure two, three. <laughs> I, 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 I Gundam is my me. pick. Gundam is my pick. That's really just all there is to it at the end of the day. Uh, Gundam, Callisto, Violet, and Scarlet. Those, those are my three picks. Let's see. I definitely don't feel strongly about Pokemon Violet and Scarlet being on this. Um, I do you're part of the problem. Should be I mean, you're list. literally part of the problem, but that's I okay. I put it on this list, Brandon. <laughs> yeah, but you're also taking it off. <laughs> like I said, I think it needs the... the the piece needs to be said, and I don't disagree that people had a shitty time with this game. Don't get me wrong. And it is a disappointing game for a lot of people. It's just like I said, I just don't think it deserves biggest disappointment. I still have fun with it. It is a big disappointment. It is a big disappointment. I just don't think it's the biggest disappointment. And I'm fine with it being runner-up. That's fine. No, that's fine. It's fine. I just, I've said my piece. You don't think it is, and I don't think Nick does either. It's fine. Nick, where are you on this whole... I mean, I'm, I'm, me. It's close to protocol. Definitely number one. Um, yeah, but we're but, looking at the other two. Uh, probably. Well, I'll give you Gundam, but Overwatch two as well. I would say those three. So the two Overwatch games. <laughs> yes. I think I like agree 100 percent with Nick. I think that's where I am. That's that's fine. Are you sure? It's fine. I don't want to. I don't want to retread. Like, shit. I don't want to go to bed angry. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> All right, so we're doing it. Yeah. Uh-huh. Biggest disappointment goes to Callisto Protocol with runners up. The two Overwatch, Overwatch two. games. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Gundam Evolution's fucking trash. <laughs> go fuck yourself, Gundam. And with that, that's the end of our first Game of the Year 2022 episode. Don't forget you can check us out on iTunes, Stitcher, Google, Amazon, wherever you get your podcasts. Also, our website, game-crunch.com, has all our old episodes. If you want to reach out to us, we're on Facebook, Twitter, or you can send us an email at gamecrunchcast at gmail.com. From Brandon, Nick, and myself, thank you all for listening to us for these Game of the Year episodes. And until the next one, which should be soon, game up. <laughs>
you know, Hasbro's new version of Clue comes out today, and I look forward to a generation of kids playing to the new um, Chef White as their sexual awakening. Uh, I see. But then, but then, like, the official, like, Mr. Monopoly account <laughs> replies, <laughs> like, I guess there's a hot new grandpa in town. And, <laughs> and like, some of these other things are just, like, they're like, I can't believe they made them fuckable. Like, all these, like, ridiculous <laughs> things. Um, it was, it was, like, a, a pretty funny tweet thread. Uh, <laughs> New Clue characters make it look like an online date, an adult online dating sim game now. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. It's so silly. <laughs> my wife and I saw you from across the bar and really dig your new vibe. 